Welcome back to my channel. This is the Mental Wellness Channel with Wahiga. If you're new here, I hope that you stick around and take a listen to what I have to share. Today, I want to talk about a really interesting subject. It is going to be on a sexual topic. So if you have kids in the room, kindly dismiss them. Before I do that, kindly like, share this video, and subscribe to my channel so that we can grow the mental wellness family together. Today, I want to talk about being promiscuous to be in control. Ding, ding, ding. Let's get into it. So being promiscuous, what does that mean? Someone who is promiscuous is a person who has a lot of sexual partners or is someone who has a very rambunctious, rambunctious sex life. And I guess it's a person that really just has a lot of sexual partners, female or male, male or female. How does a person become this way? How does a person become promiscuous? Well, there are different ways. There are different theories. Before I even get into this subject, I want to tell you that I'm not coming from a place of judgment. Certainly not. I'm just coming from a place of my experience. I'm an alcoholic in recovery. I have six years of recovery. So I just want to tell you what I've experienced, what I've been through, and what is working for me in life and what isn't. Promiscuous sex was definitely not one of them. And for me, it certainly began as a trauma response. My virginity was taken in a very unceremonious way. In the sense that it was not what I wanted, nor was it with who I wanted. It wasn't the way I had pictured it to be. And so when that opportunity went the way it went, I looked at sex as something that is just, has no value, you know? It's something that you trade. To get what you want and even though you know i'd gone to church and been told that it's for marriage it's something so special it's between a man and a woman who really love each other and all that type of stuff the way that i had experienced it was not loving special or anything like that it was cheap and a violation and so i had waited all these 19 years to keep this sacred thing. And as a society in the world, we talk so much about women keeping themselves clean and being a virgin and this and that. And I'd waited till I think my first, se second year of university for my virginity to just go that way. It was just, I think it was, it was traumatizing. But at the same time, the actions of how my virginity was taken was not violent in the sense that it wasn't by a stranger in a dark alley where I was being beaten up. I wasn't overpowered by a gang of men. It was in my hostel by a guy I was having a fling with. And it's almost like you start to blame yourself. I invited this person into my life. I invited this person into my room. I invited this person almost to do this to me and I froze. So that opened a door, a gate, a way for me to express myself sexually in a way that I had no respect for sex because it had none for me. I didn't see its value. I didn't care about it. All I knew is that I could butter it or trade it off to get what I wanted. I didn't really care particularly for anything, how it felt, really nothing much about that. If it happened to be with someone that you really liked, yes, it caused a very tight emotional bond which I now know is a soul tie and it's almost impossible to get over the person but apart from that sex was just nothing appealing to me and I think it's because of how it was introduced to me I'm not one to think that sexual assault is is low I think sexual assault is very common I don't think a lot of women have their first time with their husbands on their wedding night. I think for a lot of people, their first time is quite traumatic. And if you've been given this story about how you're supposed to wait for the one, you're supposed to wait for your soulmate, you're supposed to wait for your husband or your wife, and then something happens along the way. You were raped, sexually assaulted, traumatized. You lose hope in the beauty of sex. It loses its meaning. It becomes perverted and you become emotionally disengaged. And I think that's what happened to me. And that is how you become a person that is able to have promiscuous sex. Be with John in the morning and Tom in the evening and not think about it. Obviously, it catches up to you when you're sober. 
these things catch up to you because the body keeps score. These things catch up to you also when you have a moment of silence and it's just between you and God and you feel like you've really lost a whole lot of yourself and you know you've overshared your body, you've overshared your personhood, you've overshared and you don't know how you can get it back. You know, you, you look at these pastors online talking about soul ties and sexual purity and you're like yeah 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 but you know there's some truth to it because you feel empty and the minute you stop giving yourself to other people you feel more whole you start to feel liberated you start to feel confident in yourself you start to feel like you have standards you start to feel worthy of something so there is a way that you can move from promiscuity to celibacy. And the lie that I fell for is that promiscuity will lead me to be in control. If I'm promiscuous, I control who I'm with, when I'm with them. Because my first time and a couple of times in between were not on my terms. They were assaults, they were violations. So the promiscuity led me to think that I was having sex on my terms with who I wanted, when I wanted. And it's just not true. When you've been abused for a long time. And that's why something like sexual abuse for children is so damaging. It's because it distorts. It truly distorts the act of sex and what sex is. Because it now becomes this shameful, abusive thing. Where it literally is an expression of one's love for another within the context of marriage. Sex was made by God. It was provided by God. For us to enjoy and to multiply but the way sex is done in our day and age is so messed up and it's so risky not only do we have the sexually transmitted diseases i mean if you're not scared of hiv if you're not scared of herpes if you're not scared of syphilis if you're not scared of any kind of std you live with those people in your soul you know they live with you and all the demons and all the things that were in them come into you and it can literally make you crazy child sexual abuse is the worst form of abuse i mean i'm not trying to dictate that they are degrees of abuse or say that this abuse is worse than the other abuse i believe emotional abuse is bad i believe sexual assault is bad i believe physical assault is bad i believe all of the abuses are bad but seriously child sexual abuse you completely pervert and rob the child of experiencing sex in a holistic godly manner and it takes a lot of work to undo that damage if that person is willing to actually do the work so using promiscuity as a form of empowerment as a form of control as a form of a way to say okay my virginity was taken by rape but now i get to dictate who i sleep with what i do blah 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 it's just not the way to go i mean i've been there done that it's painful and it's not worth it actually it really isn't worth it but if you want to go and experience that life for yourself you know each person has to work their own journey but i've been down that road and i barely made it out alive and I'll tell you this, being sexually assaulted was not your fault. Being sexually assaulted over and over was not your fault. But trying or telling yourself that you're going to take control by using your sexuality is not the way to heal. It will do nothing but damage you even more. The best way to heal I've found is celibacy. It's the most empowering, most liberating, ironically, the most liberating the most peaceful journey that one can walk, where you give yourself true self-respect and true dignity. And you're really able to think clearly about yourself, especially as a woman. So I hope this message lands with you and I hope it doesn't land from this point of view of judgment, because that's the last thing I would ever want to do. I don't want to judge. I'm telling you that I've come from far and I've come from pain, and these are my experiences. So I hope that you receive this message. Please take it to God. If you have endured a lot of sexual abuse, please take it to God, and please understand that the way 
to get through sexual abuse and to overcome it is not by being promiscuous, it's by embracing a celibate life. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, kindly like, share and subscribe to my channel. Join the Mental Wellness channel. Thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in. Until the next video, bye-bye.